I'm going to make these final thoughts real short and sweet tonight. We are winning. After a symphony of mostly washed-up losers and the leftist tone-deaf morons over at CMT decided to throw a tantrum over Jason Aldean's song and accompanying music video for Try That in a Small Town, we the people, you know the ones who actually listen to country music, made a point that the woke losers and executives that preside over the industry would do well to listen to. The controversial song is climbing the charts and sits at number one on iTunes. Why? Because the silent majority is a real thing and we have real power. And it's about damn time we realize and own it. The wokesters are being set back on their heels, first with Bud Light and then a cascading waterfall of conservative wins in the Supreme Court, then the major success of the anti-child trafficking film, The Sound of Freedom, and now this Jason Aldean chart-topping song. It might seem like a minuscule thing and in the scheme of things it might be, but it's symbolic of something much bigger. It's proof that we are in fact not the minority and not in fact outnumbered. We have many battles left to fight and the 2024 election is one of those battles. It's probably even more like a war at this point, but we have the ammunition, the gusto and the intestinal fortitude to win and keep winning if we so choose to. There are a lot of things going wrong in this country, but it's not a lost cause and we are gaining ground. So enjoy your weekend, turn off the news, get outside, be with your family, touch grass, and count your blessings. It's not all going to hell. For some odd reason, the Rainbow Mafia seems to have a real stranglehold over professional sports and sadly, America's great pastime, baseball. Whether it's Pride Nights featuring blasphemous drag nuns or dropping players like Anthony Bass for pro-Christian sentiments, this crap now runs deep in the MLB. You can support any political cause, religion, or worldview, but don't be caught advocating for traditional values or beliefs. That's exactly what happened to my next guest, former Red Sox pitcher Matt Dermody. In December of 2020, Matt found God and became a Christian. He wanted to profess his dedication to the good word and book, and in 2021, he tweeted this. It wasn't an issue till Matt got called up from the minors to pitch for the Red Sox, and this tweet got pulled out by the woke mob, of course. The Red Sox then went on an apology tour denouncing the tweet and denouncing Matt. He was released shortly thereafter. We all know this BS song and dance, and I, for one, am quite sick of it. Joining me now to say his piece and set the record straight is former Red Sox pitcher Matt Dermody. Matt, it's great to have you. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks for having me. So we've got a lot to unpack here, but I want to go back to kind of how this all unfolded here. So it's my understanding that the Red Sox, they knew about this tweet before all the backlash occurred. Walk me through how that conversation happened and then how this all became such a big issue. Uh, that is correct. Um, in spring training, um, I was called in to the, uh, with the GM's office. Um, he said that he was made aware of a tweet that I made two years ago um, about homosexuality. And uh, we talked about it. He, he wanted to dive in and learn who I was and, 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 and my, in my heart and uh, why I tweeted that because it's kind of obvious uh, in today's society, you're kind of going to receive a lot of backlash from that. So I, I pretty much, you know, t t told him why, you know, and uh, it's because I believe in the Bible, you know, and I don't want anybody to go to hell. I saw, I saw the list of of all the things, you know, that lead people to hell, and I was on that list, you know, and and uh, that instilled the fear of the Lord in me. And so now it's it's not really about me anymore, but it's about helping others and and preaching the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ, that he saves us from, from the fires of hell. What's interesting to me is that it really is not Major League Baseball's problem or interest, what your personally held beliefs are, what you believe in, what your faith is, what your ideals, your convictions. It's really none of their business, right? And if you had a different worldview that celebrated homosexuality or pride flags, I have a feeling they wouldn't really take issue with it. So I think that's where the frustration lies here. But then we know you get called up, you pitch, then the Red Sox go on an apology tour saying that they deeply regret calling you up. They deeply regret having you. You know, what was that like knowing that you already had had this conversation and to see them react the way they did after it resurfaced and the woke mob took over? Well, I think, I think, uh, during spring training with my meeting with the with the GM Heim Bloom, you know, I I told like it was obvious that I'm I'm not a homophobe, you know, and the tweet, a lot of people call it homophobic, but it is far from homo homophobic as possible. I mean, I don't hate anybody in this in this world, you know, race, color, 
uh, any in, 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 in any other religion, I don't I don't hate anybody, but it's all about leading people to heaven. I want people to get to heaven, you know, and that's that's what we're going to spend for eternity. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's just the main goal. And, and you should be able to, to hold those beliefs. And then, you know, all hell really broke loose because what they do, as they do with everybody, is they go through your Twitter history because that's all they have to do. Quite frankly, I think people are unemployed and they just go through Twitter as their pastime because they have nothing better to do. And then really it all became a big spectacle. It's the same song and dance with Anthony Bass, who happens to be a good friend of mine. So I'm sure that you weren't surprised that this happened, but tell me after the backlash, tell me what those conversations were like. Did they tell you they were gonna release you for the tweet? Did they beat around the bush about it? How did that conversation happen? No, they, they they didn't tell me they released me because of the tweet. But I mean, it was a week later. And to be honest, uh, they got a lot of backlash. You know, I mean, it wasn't just me. It was the Red Sox. You know, their their front office got a lot of backlash for for calling me up. And uh, I think they didn't want to uh, stay in the fire. You know, they're trying to to, you know, calm down what was going on. So, I mean, from I, I don't you, you can't really prove, you know, one way or another. But I mean, right. Everything happened for a reason, you know. And that's why that's frustrating as well, because, you know, the same thing happened to, to Anthony Bass. Obviously, um, they didn't come right out and tell him it's because of your tweet. But I think everybody knew. And for his case, it was actually a real post on Instagram that wasn't even his own words. It was just a repost. And we saw what happened to him. And, you know, he's still right now in limbo land, wondering if he's going to be picked up or what's going to happen to his career simply because he expressed his faith, similar to the, what you did. I want to get your take on that, actually, because I'm sure you saw the video of Anthony Bass having to do what looked like a hostage video, ex uh, apologizing to everybody, explaining his post. When you saw that, were you disappointed that he apologized for something he should have never apologized for? Well, I, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but uh, I mean, we apologize because we don't want to hurt people, you know, and when we hurt people, whether they believe what we believe and they and they don't see the the perspective and like what we're coming from, you know, the the, pers the 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 perspective and why we're doing the things and saying the things that we do, it's not we're not apologizing for our faith, but we're apologizing because it it might truly have of of hurt somebody, and we and we don't want to hurt anybody. But the 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 we believe that the Bible is is true and the Word of God. You know, and and I, I encourage everybody, if you don't believe it's the truth, find out, seek the truth, you know, and I just I hope people find the truth. So I want to talk about your faith a little bit, because you have not been a lifelong Christian, from my understanding. Your Christian faith is relatively new. Tell my audience how that came to be and why you have such deep convictions that you have today. Yeah, I mean, I was 30 year old. I was 30 years old, and I I wouldn't have been able to tell you a a, a single Bible verse. Um, I went down to the Dominican, and uh, the, the whole pandemic kind of shook my whole world up because I wasn't. I lost my job in baseball. I didn't. I, I was I was kind of searching for the meaning of life after that. I mean, I I actually had a, a like a little mini uh, identity crisis because I've always thought of myself as a baseball player, and then it was it was taken away from me in the, in the blink of an eye, and I was like, now what? You know. And so I kind of I kind of feel for people in that in that realm who are we got a big identity crisis going on in America. You know, people thinking, you know, males thinking they're girls and girls thinking they're boys, you know, but um, I encourage you, you know, to seek the truth, you know, and and that's what I did. And in God's word, it, it had, the, the reason I even had a Bible was was a miracle in the first place. Um, I, I didn't even buy it because because I was seeking God, I bought it to, to please my girlfriend at the time, now my wife. So, but that was two years prior. So, uh, I brought it down to the Dominican. I read it and I was super convicted with the life that I was living. And I knew at that moment, if I, if I died that night, I was not going to be in heaven with, with, with God, you know? So I, the, the first thing I wanted to do was repent, you know, repent of all the unrighteous behavior that I was living in, you know, and the last thing I want to do is be, is be a hypocrite. You know, so uh, that was that was it right there. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I love the story. I think it's such an inspirational message. I think we need more people like you and Anthony Bass in sports. And I know that there are many in sports, but they're afraid to speak out. They're afraid to be as honest and transparent as you are. 
What would you tell those people who see what happened to you, see what happened to Anthony Bass and a list of others when they spoke out, and they're afraid to say anything because they don't want to lose their job, they don't want to be canceled? What do you tell those people? I would say listen to Jesus and what he had to say. Jesus said, do not fear the man who has the power to kill your body, but fear him who has the power to kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Because eternity is way more important than these short lives that we have here on earth. You know, and that's that that's really all that matters, you know, is eternity and where we're going to spend. So fear, fear God. That's the first step, I would say, you know, and don't fear man, fear God. So what's next for you, Matt? Are you do you think that there is a future for you in American MLB baseball? Or what are you going to do next to continue your career or continue your your faith messaging? What do you have in store? Yeah, I'm still I'm still pursuing baseball. Um, I'm tr I'm still training and working out right now. Um, I'm signed to go down to the Dominican Winter League, you know, to showcase my stuff and and show teams that I'm still willing and able to play. But uh, you know, I, I don't know the future, and uh, whatever whatever happens happens. I'm I'm just rolling with it. So if they see you and you're doing well, and they call you in and they say, Hey, listen, we would love you know to have you back in in the major leagues, but we're still concerned about this tweet. And we're wondering if you would apologize for it or we're wondering if you would explain it. What do you tell those GMs or those front offices in the future if they were to have that conversation with you? Well, I, would, I mean, I would, I would kind of just tell them like my response where I um, that I gave on, on the day that I pitched in, uh, in Cleveland. You know, I'm sorry for hurting people's feelings, you know, but but I believe in God. I believe in the word of God, you know, and I want people to get to heaven. So I'm not going to I'm not going to affirm any kind of sinful or immoral behavior, you know, that's going to lead people astray. You know, the G G Jesus said the way to heaven is a narrow road. It's not, it's the broad road, you know, the easy road that leads to destruction. Well, I'm so happy to hear that you have that intestinal fortitude. Not a lot of you exist in popular culture, certainly in sports, but we need more of it. So God bless you. Thank you for being so convicted. Thanks for sharing your time and best of luck to you. We hope to see you back in the big leagues and best of luck in the Dominican as well. Thank you, Tommy. God bless you. God bless.